Thomas Nutter, Paul's tailor. From there we went back to our hotel room, where we had a date with a very brilliant photographer. His name is Ian McMillan, and his biggest work that he's known for is that Abbey Road album cover. So we sat down with Ian, and we started talking about that album cover, about the rumors surrounding it, and how he photographed it. And two, okay. No surprise. Is it Ian? Ian. Ian. Yes. Yeah. The spelling is a little different than Ian. You it is, yes. Yeah, it's, it's the Scottish way. Um, let's see. You photographed the album cover Abbey Road, right? Yes, right. And it is amazing that in all its simplicity in the current rumor mill that has been going on in the United States, that people would see as much as they have in the album cover. You were going after simplicity, weren't you? Yes, the whole idea was to make it very simple and very photographic. Um, the whole thing was, was centered around Abbey Road and the studios where the record was made. And um, the zebra crossing was an idea which Paul came up with. And uh, I just tried to design it as simply as possible, making use of all the shapes in the roadway and the trees and things. It's a very effective album cover. But tell us some of the conditions that existed that day. Uh, why the bare feet? Why... Uh, Everybody looks at that Volkswagen and says it's out of place and uh, the license I, number is, has some significance. I, I agree about the car being out of place. We try to move it. Um, we, asked a, we had a policeman directing traffic and uh, the Volkswagen was, well, had been parked there f apparently for about two weeks. Somebody had gone off and left it there while he went on holiday. And... Um, I thought the policeman would have sets of keys for any car, you know, so we tried to get it moved, but um, they said they wouldn't be able to do that unless it was causing a, a traffic offence, which it wasn't. What about the bare feet? Um, the bare feet is easy. It was just a very, very hot day, and um, Paul just did his thing and took his shoes off and left him lying on the sidewalk and picked him up when the photographic session was over. Of course, if it's really hot, wouldn't that hurt his feet? It probably made him more uncomfortable than if he kept his shoes on, in fact, yes. How many times did you have to take that picture before you got the picture that is the cover of Abbey Road? We had six goes at it, three walking one direction, three walking the other direction, and that was number five. See, there was even one theory that was brought up, is that uh, all, their, they, all of them are leading with their left foot, except for Paul, who is leading with his right. I thought that was very lucky, because it just adds a nice little touch of, of uh, unevenness to the picture. If, if, if they'd all been lead, lead, leading with their left foot, it uh, could have looked as if it was a, a static picture. I was just very lucky in getting a, a bit of variation like that. Did they just start walking across the street and you would, you'd click it? Uh, that's about it, yes. I mean, they didn't just stand there in that position and hold it. No, 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 the whole thing was moving. I was on a step ladder in the middle of the road. And uh, we had a policeman directing traffic and letting it through when we'd taken one shot. And it was just very, very straightforward. Five, five of the pictures, their feet were in every direction and they were unevenly spaced. This, the fifth picture, which we've used, um, was very simple and, and well designed. Uh, why the order in which they are? These may sound like uh, stupid questions, but they're from rumors. They say, like, uh, John is the disciple. Uh, then we have Ringo the Undertaker. In the middle, of course, there we have the, the body, the corpse with its bare feet, and, of course, the grave digger. Uh, why this order? The order I suggested was the way they normally uh, spell out their names, John, Paul, George, and Ringo. But they said this, it doesn't have to be in any order, and it really just happened like this. So I think they were in the same order in all the pictures, but I really can't remember. It's just as it happened. And they were all in those clothes for that particular day that they p pick clothes out to come to be photographed in? I imagine they 
They, some of them may have done. I don't know. But this is just how they turned up. They may have discussed it, but I don't think they would have done, knowing them. So in other words, you took a very groovy picture. You hoped everybody would enjoy and would be an effective album cover, but you didn't ever expect this to happen. No, I certainly didn't read anything into it other than what, what was there. It was just a, a simple photograph. Now we go to the back side, <laughs> which you were telling me about where the words Abbey Beatles Abbey Road, which I thought was uh, just a, um, uh, uh, you had some letters you had slapped on the wall, but you really didn't do that, did you? No, they, the only magic in this record cover was done in the dark room by some very clever people who, who put, who, who made Beatles um, out of photographs of the lettering and uh, combined them with the basic picture of the wall and the girl walking by. The word Abbey Road was on the wall. Oh, the it? word Abbey Road was quite straight, yes. This was there. We found this very old tiles, which, which date back to about 1902, which, which are only up in this part of London, and uh, photographed this on a nice cracked wall. And then uh, the other ideas were just contributed by everybody. Paul suggested putting in the same putting beaters in and we thought of using the same tiles and mounting it as if it were on the wall and of course the the final question when it comes to this album cover which i'm sure you're sick of hearing about and and that is basically is there anything hidden did they plan anything to be hidden was there any subtlety that was supposed to be put in, that was put in there that we're all supposed to look for the only subtlety which was put in by anybody was done by the magic people in the darkroom. About yourself, you're a photographer here in London, and um, how did you, how'd you come to the point where you are now photographing Beatle album covers? I was uh, working on a book about London about two years ago, and uh, I was looking for some very avant-garde art exhibitions to photograph for it. And uh, some people on a magazine told me about an exhibition that Yoko Ono was having. So I, I went along to the uh, gallery and met Yoko and uh, photographed her for the book and also photographed her exhibition as well. And then uh, we photographed a lot of things together and uh, when she met John, she introduced me to John. And I did uh, things with John. We uh, photographed his uh, exhibition called You Are Here, which was at the Robert Fraser Gallery. I photographed uh, the exhibition which John and Yoko had at the Robert Fraser Galleries. Um, well, I can't, I just want to think a bit. I can't remember what else I've done. So from there you started photographing John and Yoko? Uh, yeah, that's right. John and Yoko were going to go to New York for um, uh, a meeting with President Nixon to uh, give him some acorns in the cause of world peace, which was rather sad because he didn't, uh, didn't get there because of um, various legal complications, and he went to Canada instead, and I photographed them together, John and Yoko, where we were going to use the pictures to uh, put up in Times Square as giant posters, but this never got off the ground. Um, then the next thing was um, John and I are working on a, a film together, which we can't talk about just now because it's going to be a big surprise. <laughs> and uh, then the album cover came along. Have you done any other album covers? Uh for the Beatles, uh, for, say, John at all and Yoko? For John and Yoko, I did um, Give Peace a Chance, which was a single. In other words, the, the jacket the, with a single. Yeah, that's right. The Plastic Owner Band. Mm -hmm. And there's an album that I got the other day in uh, New York called The Wedding Album. Did you have any photographs oh, yes. of that? I didn't know that was uh, completed, yes. I did um, the picture of the wedding cake and, and photographed the press cuttings about their wedding. I didn't know that was out. As a photographer, since Abbey Road has been released, I think it's been released over a month now here in England. It was released before, here before it was released in in, uh, yeah. in our country. 
Has your stock uh, gone up as a photographer suddenly? Just uh, you start getting more calls than you used to. to do work? Uh, yeah, it, in, in a way. It's amazing how, in fact, how little um, people notice things unless you go and say, look, I'm the guy who did this record cover. And they say, oh, are you? Uh, even people I knew who just didn't read the credit line. So I think in all of these things, one's got to go and show people. Then, certainly, when, when stock goes up. But you've got to make publicity out of it. You can't just sit back and expect things to happen, which is one of the sad facts of life. So this thing happened to you uh, with Abbey Road suddenly being a very microscopic, microscopically looked at album, and uh, the press comes to you, and the name of Ian McMillan is now pretty well known. Well, it should be well known in the States. I'm not sure about it in this country. <laughs> but I hope, something, I hope it uh, works over here as well. How long have you been in photography? Mm -hmm. I've um, been working in photography about eight years now. I had some time at college, two years at college. You have your own photographic studio? Yeah, yeah, I work on my own entirely. Anybody wants you to do an album cover, who do they call? They call Ian McMillan. <laughs> um, shall I give the phone number? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Well, this, this may be asking for trouble after what, what has happened. As long as they don't reverse the charges, the number is 602-1643. If anybody needs a great album cover, it's Ian McMillan. Thank you. Thank you. We'll continue with our tour of London and the Beatle people and the McCartney mystery and the whole thing in just a moment. You're listening to Alex Bennett from WMCA, and uh, we're sort of giving you a guided tour of our tour of London, made all the more uh, happy through the courtesy of the Apple people who led us to the right people to talk to. And still coming up, we have interviews with Ringo Starr, Paul McCartney, Obituary by Paul Krasner, and coming up next will be Paul McCartney's Barber with that all-important clue that we brought back as to whether the real Paul McCartney still exists or not. <laughs> 